Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. I'm Sar. How are you doing today? Last time we talked about the viewers that enjoyed the layout and how important they are. I left out an important one on purpose that is called in later layout. And today I'm going to talk to you how to build it by yourself in Android Studio and then port it over to Visual Studio for Xamarin.Android. Before we get started, what is the coordinator layout? How it looks like? This is a special one for material design that gives you a resizable header, a floating button that moves along with the header and reacts to user activity, and a message area, often called a snack bar. It is commonly used with content that scores. Like in Codename K, I used it to display the list of categories. Now let's build one from scratch, actually from the scoring activity template. Here in Android Studio, we create a new project. Find out the template for scoring activity. Give the project a name. And here we go. Let's not worry about the code too much yet. And we bring up this activity scoring layout Take a look at this uh, component tree. There is a hierarchy going on there. The most outer is a coordinator layout. Within it, there is always a nav bar. Then there is the collapsing toolbar and a toolbar. This is a key part that changes when you scroll up and down on your screen. Let's leverage the designer to help us understand the relationship. The collapsing toolbar actually takes up spaces when it is expanded. And the toolbar, the smaller part, it's going to always stay on top of the screen. Notice the rendering in the designer isn't 100% accurate here, but I think it still helps. Now beneath the collapsing toolbar, there is the include. This usually points to the scoring content. I'll get back to it. And last but not least is the fab, aka floating action button. You probably noticed that it is not at the bottom of the page. That is because the settings of the anchor. It is anchored to the app bar and also have the gravity of button end. You can try different gravity settings to play around it. For example, to the start, then to the end. Let's run it to see how it looks like. Now you see the collapsing tool layout gradually shrink down to only display the toolbar and the fab moves along it because of the anchor settings. And when the fab is clicked, here goes the snack bar. When the time I look at it, two things makes me feel curious. How does the nest scroller knows not to scroll until the header is fully collapsed? And where did the snack bar come from? The answer to the first question lays in this uh, included layout. It always starts with a nested score view. The key is to set up this uh, layout behavior. When used in the coordinator, you're going to set it to this app bar scoring view behavior so that the nested score view and the app bar will coordinate the scoring behavior on each other. And within the nested score view, there could be any content, like a text here, or in codename K, it is a recycler view for a lot of items. Now, question number two, snack bar. That came from the code behind. You call make on snack bar class, set up the action when the user taps on it, and you call show to make it visible to the end user. Now that you know the basics, let's make it fancy. And by fancy, I mean to add a background to the header. Here's how you do it. We put the image view. It's a child of the collapsing toolbar, but in front of the toolbar. You want to set the scale type to central crop. And the layout collapse mode to this uh, parallax. 
Oh, and be careful about this image source. The one with the wrench icon. It is for the design time only. We need to set up this uh, real source compact. Hmm, I don't see a good one. Let's bring up this uh, resource manager and drag a picture in. Much better. Now let's run it. Look at this header. Isn't it beautiful? You can do that by following the instructions. Just go ahead and do it. Now let's see how can we do it in Dambering. And a caveat almost killed this video. Let's start by creating a new project. Here I use the template of a single VO app. The layout of it is already based on in coordinator, so we don't need too many changes. Now the first thing that I would do is always take a detour to update all the NuGet packages. It's not specific to coordinator. I got bitten by it that some packages got deprecated and they stopped working. Coming back, let's check out the layout. We don't have a component tree, but this uh, document layout is going to serve the same purpose. On the root, there's our coordinator layout. It has a child of app bar, but there's no collapsing toolbar. And also the include, if you pay attention, goes to a relative layout. And then we also have a fab here. This is not exactly what we want, but it's not too bad. We could update the XML by ourselves, or I could copy it over what I have in the Android Studio. And that's what I'm going to do next. Well, obviously, we will need to fix up the IDs that exist there, but not here. I'll show you some typical cases. The first one here is a dimension that is missing, and we can add it easily to the resource. Okay, done. For theme settings, it is often the naming convention. Just correct the name by leveraging the IntelliSense. For image source that is missing, we'll need to add them into the project, just like we're adding the dimensions. Let me firstly drag and drop the image into this drawable folder. I'll give it a rename so that the file name matches the ID. Oh, and don't forget to come here to the properties to check if this uh, custom build tool value is set. If it is empty, you could copy it from other resources like uh, diamonds.xml or styles.xml. Now let's see if it resolves. If we do it correct, it will. The deal is, this part of Visual Studio is not very stable. And sometimes it takes a close and restart the solution to make it work. I think it's lucky for us. I fixed one more theme arrow. I cut it out just to save some time. And the only thing left is this include tag. Let's comment it out for now and see how it works if we deploy it. We cannot score the content because there's none. 
but we can score this title. Let's say we are halfway there. Let me do the same for the content. And I'm going to fast forward it because uh, I think you don't mind and there's uh, actually nothing too interesting. Time to go. Let's wire up the last piece, the layout. And if you pay attention to the document layout, it is very, very similar to what we had in the Android Studio. Let's deploy it again. Now, what was the caveat I mentioned earlier? It was one of my mistakes, and I'm telling you about it so we can both learn from it. The issue was I set this layout height to the app bar layout to a style which seems correct. Now, pay attention to the actual value. It is 112 dp. That is smaller than 180. And what that leads to was that when the application was running, the fab didn't show up. This issue brought in a lot of confusing. For quite a while, I thought that the anchor for fab is just not working in that ring. Matter of fact, the anchored fab will be hide when the height of the app bar becomes smaller than a threshold. And 112 is under the threshold, so fab never showed. Alright my friends, I hope you enjoyed the content. While I'm coding up the codename K, I'm going to share more experience with you. And you keep coding, keep improving, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.